The Oregon Ducks just recently had their spring game, and in this video I wanted to recap their spring game and give some of my takeaways from the game. Dan Lanning is heading into year 3 as a head coach for the Oregon Ducks, and he is really building something great over there at Oregon, and it really showed in that spring game, because there were so many players playing big roles, and we saw so many potential breakout stars, and that was definitely one of the better and more physical spring games that we have seen all spring in college football. And that just honestly shows that the culture over there at Oregon is great right now. And the kids are putting in the work and I think Dan Lanning and the Oregon Ducks are set up for a big 2024 season. One of the main things that people probably kept their eye on in this spring game was the quarterback room. Because the Oregon Ducks got two transfer portal quarterbacks and Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore who were both very talented quarterbacks in their own right. And I thought the quarterbacks for Oregon looked pretty solid. Dante Moore was pretty accurate on his throws and he showed a lot of potential for the future. And I think Don Timor is going to be 100% ready when it is his time to start. He didn't do anything crazy in the spring game and he didn't really over impress. But I think if you are an Oregon fan, you saw what you wanted out of a guy like Dante Moore. And he went 11 for 16 on the day. Austin Novosad also had a pretty solid game. He had 177 passing yards on the day, which was the most. He only went 12 for 22 on his completions, but he looked very calm in the pocket. And he was taking his shots down the field and his arm strength looked really good in that game. And I think Austin Novosad has a very bright future and he adds a lot more depth in that quarterback room for the Oregon Ducks. And he has definitely grown as a quarterback. But even though Austin Novosad led the day in passing yards and had a pretty solid showing, we definitely shouldn't expect him to push Dante Moore or Dylan Gabriel for their starting spot in 2024. But Austin Novosad is a potential future starter. Dylan Gabriel passed for 163 yards and two touchdowns. He did not really over impress, but he had a decent completion percentage of 66.6, .6, and he was very good at getting the ball away quick, and I definitely like that from Dylan Gabriel. He had a lot of pressure on him, and the pass rush made it difficult for Dylan Gabriel, and it forced some of his passes to be a bit off, because the pass rush was right in his face, and that's tough as a shorter quarterback. And I'll get to that pass rush for Oregon later in the video, but there's honestly nothing very big to take away from the quarterback room other than Austin Novosad really getting involved and being the leader in passing yards on the day. So we definitely have to give Austin Novosad credit for a very solid performance in that spring game. But Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore didn't have any insane highlights, but I still think we definitely seen positives from Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore. And Dylan Gabriel is still likely going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten. The Russian attack also looked very good, and possibly even improved from last season. Because you may have lost in a thousand yard rusher in Bucky Irving to the NFL, but we learned in that spring game that the D2 transfer Jay Harris is a beast. And I think he's going to play a pretty big role in that Russian attack this upcoming season for the Oregon Ducks. And he could potentially be that number 2 running back for Oregon behind Jordan James. And he honestly might have been the MVP of the whole spring game and he definitely really impressed. And of course Jordan James was a beast. Which was very expected and he's probably one of the more underrated quarterbacks in the country. And he ran for over 100 yards in that spring game. And Oregon has a loaded running back room and a one-two punch of Jordan James and Jay Harris could really be a physical and dominant force in the backfield for the Oregon Ducks. And all I gotta say is have fun stopping that combo because they could be a force in the Big Ten. We also seen Jaden Lamar and Bryson Cobbins have a solid day. We didn't get to see Noah Whittington but he was a very good running back for Oregon last year. And I definitely expect him to either be that number two or number three guy if he could stay healthy. So Oregon has two very good running backs and Noah Whittington could also make the Oregon Ducks three deep at running back. But we still haven't seen Noah Whittington in a while so I don't know what role he will play next season. But he is definitely a guy to watch out for because I know he is very talented. The receiving room also looks very deep like we expected. Tez Johnson is doing Tez Johnson things and he was a receiver that was flying under a lot of people's radars last season. But let me tell you he definitely will not be next season because he has a lot of momentum heading into next season. We also seen Evan Stewart get a bit involved in the offense, including making a 180 catch over his defender that ultimately didn't count. But I think we could see Dylan Gabriel connecting with Evan Stewart for many big gains this season and that could just be very hard to stop. Justice Lowe missed most of last season due to injury, but he could potentially be sneaky and he showed some spark with multiple catches in that spring game. And he is a guy that isn't expected to see the field much in 2024, but he is really getting a decent amount of hype. And that honestly just shows how deep that Oregon receiving room is. And I wouldn't be surprised if Justin Lowe played a bigger role than we expected next season. That Oregon receiving room also has Trayshawn Holding, Gary Bryant Jr. and Kyle Casper. And they should all get very involved in the offense next season. 
and Oregon might just have the deepest receiving core in the country. The offense really looked spectacular as a whole, but one thing that impressed me was how much pressure their defensive line got on the quarterbacks. Because this is an offensive line that was one of the best in the country last season, and they return three starters and bring in a power five starter in a very solid center. But that offensive line was still really getting pushed to the limits at least in the first half because Oregon's defensive line was really giving them trouble. And it looks like Oregon is really evolving on the defensive side of the ball. And I think Dan Lanning has already built a defensive culture over there, but now it's about putting together a championship defense heading into the Big Ten. And I think Oregon is already a Big Ten team, but now they just have to put it all together. And this may be the defense that has what it takes to lead Oregon to a Big Ten championship and potentially even a national championship because the Oregon Ducks have never actually won a national championship in school history. The pass rush from the Oregon Ducks was very good in that spring game. Defensive tackle is one of the main concerns from this team, but I really like what I've seen up front, and these younger defensive tackles are definitely growing. Ben Roberts looked pretty good. The transfer portal defensive tackle Jamari Caldwell also looked pretty good. And of course, Jordan Birch and Mateo Uyungle are also going to be forces on the edge for Oregon next season. The secondary for Oregon adds a bunch of new additions, and it is going to be very interesting to see how they will all pair together in 2024. But let me tell you, the freshmen shined in this game. Because Aaron Flowers and Dakota Fields put together very good games, Fields had an interception that was returned for 54 yards, and Flowers had multiple tackles and a pass deflection. There's still a lot more to see from the second day with guys like Kobe Savage, Brandon Johnson, and of course the lockdown corner and Jabbar Muhammad. And this secondary is stacked, and the secondary has potential to be scary if they click together. And ultimately, we saw many minor injuries that limited the play of some of those top defensive backs like a Kobe Savage and Dante Manning because they did both leave the game in separate halves with injuries. We also seen the receiving room have minor injuries. Treshawn Holden hurt his hamstring. And another guy I forgot to mention in that receiving core, five-star receiver Jerry and Dickey left in the second half with a leg injury. Dan Lanning stated after the game that football is football and the only way to get better is by playing football. Lanning also said after the game that none of the injuries that happened are expected to be serious. And I really respect that from Dan Lanning. And he just lets those kids go out there and play physical football and battle until the end. And that just shows what Dan Lanning believes in as a head coach. This was definitely a very positive spring game for the Oregon Ducks. And I guess a bonus is being able to see your kicker knock down a 49-yard field goal. Because let's be honest, Oregon really had their issues at kicking field goals last season. And it may have cost them the first game against Washington. This Oregon team is definitely a serious contender to win the Big Ten in 2024. And that game in Austin Stadium against the Ohio State Buckeyes is going to be legendary. And it is going to be insane. And it will be a game that has the two most stacked rosters in all of college football. I think Dan Lanning has the Oregon Ducks set up perfectly to kick down the door to the Big Ten and make a statement right away. This Oregon team returns 69% of production from last season. And I cannot really find many things that concern me with this team. I would say one thing that I would like to see from Oregon is someone step up and become a beast at defensive tackle because they have some new faces, and Amarion Washington and Ben Roberts are still young, and they still really have to step up and prove themselves when the fall comes. But I think there's so many potential stars on that defensive line, and you could not really take away from that, because the defensive line dominated in that spring game, and they really impressed. Oregon only allowed 17 points a game last season, and the arrow is only pointing up. So have fun stopping this Oregon team, because there's probably only a couple of teams in college football that are on the same talent level of the Oregon Ducks. And that is why the Oregon Ducks are in the top four odds to win the 2025 National Championship. And I cannot wait to see just how good this team can be in year three under Dan Lanning. And I definitely liked what I saw from that spring game. And there was a lot of real football played on the field and that's always fun to see. So let's give props to Dan Lanning for letting his team go out there and put up a fantastic game. But anyways, you guys let me know some of your takeaways from the Oregon Ducks spring game. Let me know what I missed because I'm sure I missed a lot of things. And I would love to hear your feedback down in the comments below. But that is going to do it for today's video. Let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football then you will love this channel. Because we upload a ton of college football content. And we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my discord server down in the description below. But that is going to do it guys and peace out.